So hello everybody, good evening and welcome. And thanks you for being here and for attending our uh, today's webinar. For me, it's a pleasure and an honor to have the possibility to introduce the webinar on how to use MapRun, that is a GPS-based orienteering app that allows users to participate and organize virtual orienteering courses and, and events. I'm Paolo Menescardi, president of LORMA, a sport organization affiliated with the Italian Orienteering Federation. And here with me, there are Zoltan and Gabriella from Hungary. The idea of this webinar um, dedicated on how to start using the app comes from some requests we have received while implementing some European projects. So it's not a, an official webinar. It's not an official training recognized by any orienteering federation. It's just an, an awareness workshop on how to use, start using the app because we consider that it might be useful uh, for, especially for the beginners, to start organizing orienteering event and course. So therefore, in general, the time You are muted, Paolo. Yeah. So in general, I think that the, um, the target audience are beginners and newcomer and those who want to approach the world of orienteering. Uh, today we try to So today we try to, to stay in um, one hour in 60 minutes. And since there will be a lot of participants. We have decided not to take any live question during the session. At the end of the webinar, we will send you an email where those who want to share a question with us, they can. And based on the, the number and the type kind of question, we decide whether to organize another webinar or to provide waiter responses to everybody. So at the end of the webinar, we are also going to share with you the video, the recording, so you can rewatch the, the webinar as many times as you like. So my invitation is just to enjoy the webinar, take notes of any questions you might have, and share them with us at, at the end of the, the session. I won't waste any more time. And uh, so I'm passing the ball to the speaker, Gabriella and Zoltan. Uh, the stage is yours. Thank you very much, and see you later. Thank you, Paolo. Uh, just a short introduction from us. Uh, uh, we will split uh, the today session. Uh, first part will be a bit kind of overview uh, what we do with MapRun, and the second part that that will be led by me, and the second part in a practice will be led by uh, Gabriela. We are from Hungary. We have a, a quite good connection with our uh, favorite sport. And uh, I need to correct a bit, Paolo, because uh, although uh, the basic idea is coming uh, from orienteering as such, but uh, the tool itself can be used uh, in a different fields as well. And you will see later on what kind of options we can uh, feel, we can see behind uh, the original ID. So uh, I would move, we have some, um, um, as you mentioned, awareness uh, uh, actions or, or show how to uh, present the, how to introduce the MapRun as an application. Uh, what is MapRun? So uh, it's a kind of uh, application, a kind of online tool, what we, uh, can use for any kind of challenges where we need to find something on the terrain or uh, in, our, in our surrounding in order to improve our navigation skills. Uh, you see here some initial screen from the developer itself. There is a web page. Anyhow, you will get the overview on all important uh, links at the end of uh, the presentation. So you can trace back where you should start or where you can start uh, with some additional details. Uh, we highly suggest, uh, I mean, highly uh, propose to 
to go through all the legal things which is behind, although uh, the application, use of the application is free. There are some uh, subject and there are some features which uh, which has a cost, but a kind of nominal cost, which is not a, a big value. So uh, this version, uh, now it's at the map run number seven. So that's the latest uh, update. The author and uh, the owner of the copyright is Peter Effany. Uh, by the way, the, the company name is Effany Enterprise. So you can uh, identify him behind. Um, the data what we upload to the server is located in Australia. It's not so important, but sometimes there, there can be some kind of delay when we define new roads or new maps or new uh, challenges. Uh, it takes uh, a few seconds more than, than usual uh, with a local server. So uh, you can find uh, uh, the, the license agreements on, on the web page. But this is valid for those uh, administrators uh, who has a bit uh, higher uh, level of uh, understanding and higher level of uh, complication uh, for the map run uh, course identification. We will not start with that, but you will you will have some overview how it works uh, finally. So. Back to the general ID, it's a kind of uh, uh, format what we use uh, in order to uh, have fun and fitness uh, mainly in outdoor activities, but there are some solutions and options uh, to use it indoor as well. Um, what we need for such uh, activities, uh, for sure, we need some kind of uh, uh, GPS connected uh, uh, equipment, a kind of gadget could be a smartphone, could be a watch, for example, or a tablet, which can uh, connect for the GPS systems, because uh, these uh, gadgets will be used for punching and timing. So registering where we are during the course and uh, the time when it is important, then uh, the start and the finish time can be measured. During the track, uh, all the tracking details can be recorded and can be uploaded for the server in order to trace back uh, whenever you want to repeat or to, to be measured with somebody else on the same course. So the most important is that uh, comparing to the original traditional orienteering competition, there is no need to put uh, the orienteering flags or any kind of units uh, on the terrain. And uh, this could save a lot of time and effort for the organizers because. Zoltan, sorry, you're muted. Now, I think I'm back. Uh, yes. Yes. Okay, good. So um, there is no need to put flags or any kind of units on, on the terrain which can uh, save a lot of time and effort for the organizers. Th those courses can be set from the desk and uh, the course uh, should not be closed by end of the day. So it can be left open uh, up to the admin wants to leave it open for a longer period of time. And uh, you can have, or the participants can have uh, immediate feedback from uh, their tracks and uh, you can uh, you can uh, you can see your previous tries, previous tracks, and comparing with other ones. So it's recorded and archived in in that sense. Um, this uh, version what we show is a kind of uh, uh, structure. We can have. Uh, um, we can have courses which are defined per geographical area or on a level of the clubs, or you can create own uh, personal uh, uh, courses as well. But uh, in the different levels, there is a certain level where we can use completely free of charge, at least to try it, uh, it is wise. So a short, um, um, short uh, feedback from the last session, what uh, we explained that normally if you go uh, some navigation task in uh, in the terrain, outdoor, you, you should have a kind of base map. 
and the course details like the challenge, which is uh, uh, recorded on the map with uh, purple circles and connected lines are the orienteering task um, in your hand. Normally this is given uh, like on a paper. Now we change from paper to online and you will see that what options, how we can use the gadget and the paper version, a kind of combination of that. So normally a uh, base, orienteering map with the course looks like uh, sorry looks like on, on that way so the the colored one is the map from the terrain uh, the purple one is the course uh, which is on uh, on the upper layer on the terrain basically th those ones are two set of informations uh, in uh, in the map run one left side is the base map and the right side, you see the empty uh, set of controls. In that case, it's a kind of line course where you should follow the sequence starting from the re-angle and uh, sequence numbers are the, the task, uh, uh, how to visit the control points uh, on that. So in map realm, those ones are built on a very similar way how we do in uh, normal orienteering event uh, preparation. There is uh, two uh, abbreviation behind, which uh, you should remember later on uh, during our uh, presentation. Key, key ML is uh, the set of the controls. Those ones are here on in a sequence in, in that example. KMZ is the file where we have a lot of information, including terrain, contours, and uh, contour lines, uh, roads, passes, vegetation details, or water details on the map. But even some characters or even pictures can be done in, with KMZs. So KMZ is a bit more complex one. KML uh, coming from uh, uh, identified uh, uh, dots or controls and uh, points and lines. So the combination will be explained later how to put in uh, MapRAM. Uh, the very first, uh, what uh, you have discovered maybe, majority of you is that uh, if you open the application, which is on uh, your uh, phone or on your watch, the first one is depending on your uh, uh, exact coordination, you should find an existing event which is close to you. And uh, the uh, based on the GPS information, the application will show to you the closest events, what you can try. So events near me button on the application shows uh, the ones which are really close to you. Uh, even it can be used in uh, when you are traveling or you are on holiday, you can try it uh, in advance and you can try on site uh, if there is a preparation, an existing event which is open uh, for, for the moment. Because as I mentioned, that uh, events can be closed, can be reopened and can, can be prolonged as well. So this is the easiest way how to catch a prepared uh, uh, event. On, uh, on your device. The very basic one, if you want to introduce something or if you want to uh, build some navigation challenge um, for your family or for your own or for your teammates or for a kind of uh, break in your uh, a heavy um, workshop uh, with your uh, colleagues, it's uh, where you don't have any copy of orienteering map, it's also possible with map run. So without any map, you can identify uh, navigation challenge uh, via the application. So this quick start event can be done by your own, a very simple course where you need only a kind of uh, aerial photo or uh, Google Earth uh, uh, photo without uh, any additional details. And you can uh, put your uh, challenges, a kind of sequence, like a course which uh, should be visited 
control by control in a kind of like a core setting uh, uh, system, but without using any kind of systems by the application, it is possible. This is the very basic one. So if you are on holiday and you need some kind of uh, challenge, you can do already on the second day uh, this kind of uh, uh, additional feature from uh, that anywhere where we have coverage of uh, GPS signals. So this is the very one, very first one and the very simplest one. You will see in practice how it works. This is the quick start event. You can do, uh, as a next stage, you can do a kind of a personal event. And uh, for that, you should use uh, in the menu system, in a map around system, the check sites feature. Uh, here, it the same issue is that you don't need to create a course file. You can do that by dropping these kind of pins uh, from the system to any kind of locations which is close to you. Uh, and these pins uh, can be visited and can be seen on uh, the Google Earth basic map. But uh, you can do some with some uh, preparation. You can do the KMZ format. You remember the color map. You can do and you can copy that map for uh, this Google Earth surface in order to be precisely positioned on uh, with the georeferenced uh, positions on um, uh, the application, and you can do your exercise on this uh, copied map. Very simple, you will see some details by Gabriel later on. It's a personal event, we call it. All are free of charge. Next one is a bit more complicated, and uh, this is the need or requirement from the developer as well. Whenever you create a, an event, a quick start or personal ones, you will have you will have a kind of uh, identification, a kind of code from your event, and these ones are stored on the server. And if you want to be responsible for a club or for a geographic location or even for a country itself, then you should show that this is your experience, this is your uh, preparation, what you did before. And if it is uh, from knowledge point of view, it's, it's well understood for uh, or well understood by the developer, then you can request administration rights for certain regions or levels, as I mentioned, clubs, clubs or region or subfolders. And then you can manage uh, the your events, which can be used as a public one. And you can create any uh, further uh, folders or regions uh, within your country in order to find uh, the best identification point for the future users. Those ones who has uh, regular use of MAPRAM in uh, the certain area, then uh, uh, a kind of, um, how we call it, a kind of uh, coverage cost is applied for those courses where the track is maintained, when the track is archived uh, in the system folder, and this is 50 US dollar cent per uh, entry in, in that sense. So that's the, uh, the only way how to support the further development, and this is the only way how to manage uh, the licenses on the server, which is, as I mentioned, located in uh, other part of the world. By the way, uh, surprisingly or not, but uh, the English uh, language countries like uh, in UK or in uh, New Zealand or Australia, these are the countries where we have many uh, of sources of uh, such uh, uh, predefined public events uh, in MAPRA. So back to a bit for uh, details. So KML files, these ones are, which is uh, a kind of uh, points or polygons or lines which are connected. This is the course itself, um, the purple layer on the orienteering map. 
in uh, in Mapron, this is how we uh, define the course itself. But in public event, only the administrators can do that uh, before the event is opened, and then uh, up to the situation or up to the need, uh, this can be left open uh, over years or uh, a limited time frame, for example. So KML is the uh, the course. KMZ, as uh, I explained, those ones are mapping details, the colored uh, maps, very important that this should be a georeferenced means that uh, the accuracy of that map should be in line with uh, GPS coordination. The best one is uh, if uh, it is put on, uh, on the next layer of the Google Earth, and then there can be several modifications. Uh, I mean, shrinking, uh, tightening, and, uh, and using the same, uh, uh, same structure how to put uh, exact, exactly uh, in line with uh, uh, GPS uh, system. Still, uh, um, yeah, this is what I mentioned, the stretching, rotating, and uh, starting again if it is not so accurate. Whenever you have a source in OCAD, OCAD is one of the most um, uh, valuable softwares in our orienteering uh, mapping, this export, I mean, this OCAD export can be a KMZ directly uh, from OCAD to, to use it uh, in, in MAPROM. The precondition is that the map itself in OCAD should be started with the uh, correct geo reference mode, and there would, would be any issue uh, to upload for a MAPROM in that sense. We have some uh, examples here at the next stage. Then, uh, uh, what are the main tasks for the administrators? As uh, explained, that there is a folder and kind of subfolders. If you want to define, this can be depending on uh, on the regions or or a set of the legal rights behind. Because uh, as we heard, that there, there can be some countries where uh, creating a map is based on the geographic situation and not based on the copyright, for example, but it's important to use a legal legislation uh, uh, behind, not to uh, create maps for, uh, from a terrain, which is not uh, applicable for the certain persons. Okay, um, then what is important, and we should understand that punching uh, on the controls is uh, depending on the accuracy of uh, the mentioned latitude and longitude uh, uh, coordination systems of the controls and not the base maps. So punching uh, with uh, the purple lines and not with the base map, because there are some uh, clubs who are using still or still using printed maps and using the phone or the watch for the map run. So it's a kind of real uh, orienteering where you don't need to use your SE card or emit cards uh, on the terrain and asking and searching for the flags and equipment. So you can do with your watch and use with a printed map. So that's why important to have the right set and the precise set of, uh, of uh, uh, KML files. So those ones which are recorded in MapRun server and used with purple color on your printed maps. The next point is important as well. Uh, there are certain terrains, uh, mostly in urban area, where you have reflections uh, from the big buildings or high buildings. So uh, in order to avoid this kind of reflections and failure in punching, you should use those objects on the terrain, which is clearly, uh, yeah, I would call it visible uh, from the satellite system, so there is no disturbance, physical disturbance, or uh, this kind of uh, uh, burdens to have uh, uh, still fun using MAPRA. Those ones are the most important details here. 
Uh, then uh, you can imagine that uh, with uh, the same control set, you can have or we can have several type of um, uh, variations in, uh, in 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 our environment. As uh, Paolo mentioned, of course, it was uh, prepared for running, for orient walking, but you can use it for cycling or a mountain bike orienteering. You can use cross country uh, skiing or even kayaking as well. But most important is in all cases, uh, we need to take care that time is taken by the equipment. And sometimes when the challenge is not uh, to use the complete range or complete sequence of uh, the controls, like for example, scoring uh, or uh, scattered uh, uh, courses, the number of scores, what you collect from the different control points. And ranking uh, depending on the time and depending on the collected scores, for example. Um, here's, here is the list uh, what uh, we can define in MAPRON, and there are some combinations as well. The classic line course is a normal orienteering, one start sequence of controls and one finish. Start anywhere, a kind of set of the controls around us, and we can define where we start, but we need to take and punch all the controls uh, in a given sequence. So the start can be any point. Scatter is uh, when you try to uh, collect as many as possible from the terrain, a kind of collection of the control points, but the fastest, uh, I mean, timing, uh, time-based will be the winner. We can have uh, uh, different scores at the controls. So there can be score number one for some controls, score number five for the most forest uh, controls or uh, heavy ones or difficult ones or demanding ones. And uh, there can be some combination on the scoring uh, schemes uh, behind this, kind of, this uh, score system can be hunt, which is very similar to the geocaching system. You can uh, use your time and you can visit several times uh, to collect uh, later on uh, the controls. Um, which is important, which is uh, st still ad added uh, service is that if you have limited uh, surface or limited area, you can do it by uh, this kind of score B when uh, first round should be collected by the odd number, the second round is the even number controls. There can be a combination with uh, the with, uh, score W where there can be identified controls which needs to be taken in the first 10 minutes or in the last 10 minutes. So there can be some challenging uh, tasks uh, without, with, uh, with the application. It's not really possible with uh, paper-based maps. If you don't want to use the GPS uh, system or application for the punching, you can do it with QR codes or NFC text, for example, indoor, but still using the gadget or uh, the service of the MAPRON. And uh, there can be a kind of uh, trail events as well, when the route is important and you should follow the route. Let's see what are we discussing. This is the normal uh, uh, line course. This is the normal uh, trail course where you need to follow the road, uh, which is given uh, by uh, this purple scattered uh, pass or line. This is the start anywhere, where the sequence, I mean, the direction is given uh, between the controls, but uh, you can start any of uh, controls. And this one is the scatter or scoring uh, course, as it is mentioned. Here in the presentation, we show some links, which, uh, which is a bit uh, a heavy one, but you can do and you can collect information, pre best practices from uh, such sources. The, very, uh, the two one, which is in the first line, uh, row number one and two is from the developer side. We highly recommend to start with that one because this is the most precise information uh, from the system itself. Um, that would be my part. Um, I would give the uh, the option to Gabriela to show some of the solutions and features, uh, uh, how it is defined, how it can be done uh, in uh, 
in the system directly. So, Gabi? Thank you, Zoltan. I would continue and let's do some practice. <laughs> Okay. Uh, this is the service side uh, that is given for MapRun administrators. Uh, we call it MapRun uh, console. Uh, it is not mandatory uh, to to authenticate any cases. Uh, this group of functions uh, from leaderboard to purple pen tools, it is available for everybody without, uh, without uh, having real administrator access. And here are <clears throat> the complex functions that allow you when, when you are an admin, uh, to to work with with uh, permanent courses with with public events uh, that are shared for a larger uh, community. As the first step, uh, I want to show you this basic thing. Um, the first one: uh, how to create a map file that is that is ready to import into a MapRun application. Just to show you, it is not a rocket science and can be done even if you are, if you are not a map maker. Let's start this KMZ creation. Uh, yesterday, I, I played a little bit. Uh, let's show you, it is my one of my favorite sites. It is an open source <clears throat> map site. Here is our hometown and the surrounding uh, hills. So currently uh, what I do, uh, I will create a KMZ file containing uh, this area, and then I will define a KML course, course uh, based, on, based on this map. Uh, yesterday I saved the picture, uh, this is it from this uh, open source site. So I would use it as a source. It's a GPG file, I import it. Okay, here I can see the picture. Uh, it is very important that it should be aligned to north. So here you can revise, uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Uh, here you can revise the image quality and size. Uh, I can, for this de demonstration, I can confirm it is okay. And then what, what uh, we see here, on the left side, I have my picture where um, I should I should point out uh, the first reference point. Let's have it by this bridge here. And now I do it on the real map that is provided by the developer. Um, unfortunately, it's always started from Australia. <laughs> What a surprise. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. So I locate uh, Hungary. Then zooming. I'm nearing. And here it is. Uh, as you see, uh, I move, I move uh, the 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 background, and 
and I mark the reference point with this red circle. So mm. now I have I have one reference point. I fixed it. I pointed it uh, on the in the picture and uh, on the map as well. So I save it. Then I should do it, I should do it again. Uh, I suggest to use always uh, points uh, far from each other as far as you can. It will it will make your KMZ more accurate. Okay, let's try the same. I'm following this little uh, stream and I point out uh, the other bridge. It is here. So as you see, it is also a, a fixed point. Oh, I made a mistake. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. It is not not the stream that I wanted. It is here. It's okay now. And I saved the second pin as well. Then I would get the result. Uh, you can do it uh, more precisely. So uh, we have the option redo pins if 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 you are. Uh, not okay with the outcome, but for me, it seems to be okay. If you change the opacity, you will see if it is located right or not. For for the map run, uh, uh, where the, the default tolerance is 15 meters for punching, I think uh, this precision is okay. Uh, what should I do? Save it, I'm sorry, <laughs> save it as a KMZ. Uh, let me emphasize that uh, usually uh, the big pictures are split into into smaller parts. We call them ties with this size. So leave it as is by default. So usually we work uh, with with tied KMZ, tied KMZs. Um, I don't save it again. I have it in my folder. This is it. I did it yesterday. And uh, if I change uh, the, the extension from KMZ to zip, and by double click, I open it. What we have here, here are the ties making making the the map as as we saw for example this is the first tie so this is the content of a kmz all the ties are here they are numbered and what we have into this additional uh, descriptor file it is it is a special connection between the map ties, for example, here the first tie as a JPEG image, and here are the, the georeferencing details, as you see. So that's it. I remain it back since uh, we would need it for the uploading. <clears throat> So this is the KMZ. Back to the developer side. He has also a special feature for everybody. Uh, create a KML file. Um, here you have the option uh, to do a new KML uh, <clears throat> to the surface of the, the satellite. Uh, um, but if you had 
already a KMZ, it is better to import it as the first step since uh, the system uh, will relocate and put the KMZ into its its proper place. Mm -hmm. uh, I zoom it a little bit. Okay. And now I'm ready uh, to set my first course file, my, my first KML file. How to do that? If I want to place somewhere uh, a control point, uh, either it, it could be the start or the finish as well, I do a right click. So for example, I want to have here the start. It it's always uh, should be named with big S and one. It's, it's, it's a convention. We should accept it from the developer. If you want to change it, uh, again, a right click. For example, I wouldn't delete it now since I put it on already, but I, I moved it a little bit just to show you. Uh -oh. For example, here. Okay, we have the start point. Then I'd continue. Okay, it would be great um, to, to have one control around here. Uh, we use always numbers uh, to, to identify the controls. Then, okay, I would put the next control here uh, to the clearing. Then here, there's a little house, <clears throat> for example, and so on and so on. If you liked, uh, you can, you can uh, uh, allow this op option. It will help you uh, if you if you are thinking about a line course. Mm. Then it's easier to imagine uh, the legs. Um, for example, I put one additional control to here. This is it. And at the end, uh, let's have the finish around here. It's always named big F and one. Okay, that's it. Then <clears throat> I'm in trouble, always this, this toolbar, sorry. <laughs> uh, here we have the option, save and download. KML. You should name it. Okay, I would call it uh, test scatter. And uh, I should add, uh, you you would find some additional details uh, about uh, the the quotes that might be put into the name of the KML. Um, if you are familiar with it. Uh, this moment you can decide about uh, the event type. Uh, would it be a scatter or a line course? There are special codes that we can put into the KML name. Uh, if you are a beginner and you don't want to use it, you, you can uh, skip it uh, for permanent courses. The, the event types uh, must be set directly via additional parameters. But for example, if you are preparing using the check site option, then you should learn it. Mm, minimum this, this abbreviation. So, so PXAS means always a scatter and PXAC means a line course. You will need it when you are trying to upload your first course in check site option. And I save OK. And uh, I would find the KML file into the downloads uh, for my, for my <clears throat> Windows user. So we have the basic files for for, <clears throat> for starting uh, 
the next steps uh, to upload uh, some event. Uh, before that, let me show you how do you do it uh, on your mobile. Zoltan mentioned that we have the option, the quick start. Uh, when you have an installed uh, MapRun application, um, here uh, in the upper uh, right corner, there's a special hamburger menu. <laughs> if you click that, uh, here you would get same function, create KMZ map, same way with two reference points. Uh, it can be done uh, on your mobile as well. And here is the quick start option. Uh, if, we, if we initiate it from the menu, uh, we would get this, this screen. Here uh, we have the option to import a KMZ, but we can work without this one as well, uh, using only the, the satellite picture. Mm -hmm. And then absolutely the same way you can, you can drop your controls, starting uh, with S1, then the normal controls, and then you can finish it by F, F1. You can save it locally into your mobile, and then that's that's why the name is Quick Start. It's it's uh, really <clears throat> it's really uh, to start uh, your challenge, or you can save it and and you can send it uh, via email to your friends. Suppose that your mobile uh, has has a for example, Gmail or any other mail client. So that's it. Okay. Mm. Okay, what to do uh, with these files that we have just created? Uh, let's go again uh, to the menu, but still to the, uh, to the uh, public part. Here is the setup check site option. Here you may check this description. It emphasizes again that it's a, a special private event uh, protected by six-digit six code. Um, as the first step, uh, here we defined uh, the event name. Uh, if you created a, a scatter event or a scoring event uh, with, with, with the simplest uh, uh, scoring forms, then you should learn the code. So you should put uh, the, the, the quotes into the event name. So here I say, okay, my event name is test scatter, and uh, here I put the code that will be recognized uh, by the by the software. You may extend the expiration period uh, to maximum uh, three months, as you see. Then everything, uh, the results, uh, the, the KMZ and the KML files will be removed automatically from the server. Um, since uh, you are the uploader, uh, you are responsible, uh, what, are, <laughs> what are you doing? So uh, I think it's okay to provide uh, some personal details. Uh, you may feel these fields with any, any, <laughs> anything any that you want, uh, but usually uh, I, I add uh, my my real details. So I'm responsible for this. I'm uploading it, and and uh, add, uh, the email address as well. Then. Uh, <clears throat> We upload the KMZ file that we have just created, and the KML file, it is also there. 
It's terrible, this tool. <laughs> oh, it's... What do you mean, terrible? Ah, uh, this one. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot find the buttons. Uh, okay. <laughs> uh, for check sites, uh, we don't have a large variety which, which, uh, which settings uh, can be preset uh, for, for the runners because most of them uh, could be changed on their mobile as well. But the, the developer proposes you uh, by default uh, activate the the location display option, but you can turn it off. And then when you add the, add the event, you will get back the six digit code. Uh, note it and save it because it is shown only once. Mm -hmm. Then if you shared this event with anybody uh, in your team, then uh, please provide them this six digit code. What would happen? Um, I think within same menu, uh, here's the check site option. And when you click it, it will ask you to input the six digit code and then the KMZ KML would be downloaded into the mobile. Uh, the, the runners uh, can, can uh, do the, the challenge. Um, their uh, total time, the time split details and the track would be, uh, would be stored only locally uh, by the mobile phone, but uh, if they go to the, here is the, the result handling, uh, if they locate uh, the, their local result and ask the manual upload, only the time results could be uploaded into the server. How can you, how can you reach uh, the, these uh, check site, um, check site uh, results on the server. Here is, uh, he, this is the, the, the home page of the developer side, and I ask uh, results leaderboard. Uh, I say, okay, I need, for example, two days history. And then let's see, uh, maybe this way uh, I would find my test event. So yesterday evening, I created a check site event. It is this name. Uh, my res result would be there only <laughs> without a track because for, for the check site events, uh, the tracks oh. are not uploaded uh, to the server and only on the, some ranking and uh, time details would be available. Okay, and then finally, let's see how we can upload a, a, permanent, a permanent event into the server. Uh, maybe we had we we had some discussion about uh, about the warnings. So uh, currently, you can see this is our uh, contribution from Hungary that is kindly warned for me. Any cases when I try to create a new event, <clears throat> and uh, here this is a long form where we can provide many, many things. But this is the way when, when I can define a new permanent event uh, for, for the region uh, for which I'm responsible. I provide our club name. Then, as you see here, we can define the participation date range, uh, the, the, the period. Uh, <clears throat> uh, 
for, for the uh, results and tracks uh, why they are stored in the server uh, later would be archived and removed. Uh, here you can set uh, some additional uh, flags uh, about the event, event type. Uh, the most important to find the best uh, subfolder to put uh, the event. Uh, we would copy the KMZ and KML file into this folder. Maybe you can create here a new um, subfolder. Then I locate the KMZ file. I would use the same one as, as for the check site. Uh, then uh, I would locate again the KML file. If you had uh, a suggested route, then uh, a GPX uh, file could be imported as well, and that will be shown uh, also on the map to be followed. And here we can see many, many parameters. Uh, the most important, uh, the type of the event. I cannot change this because I set it by the name. But uh, if I hadn't uh, here, the drop-down list would show line, scoring, etc. Uh, by default, the punching will be GPS-based. Uh, many, many things, how the, uh, the, the course would be displayed. Here is the base tolerance, many, many options. For example, if I if I liked uh, to start it anywhere, I should activate it. Mm. Uh, many parameters has an additional flag if a user can change it or not. Uh, I cannot and I cannot sh uh, share all the details. Uh, the developer has an accurate description about the most important uh, parameters. Then I push add event. And what I get back, we should wait a little bit. Uh, I get back a feedback. How many map ties uh, had the KMZ? Uh, what is the event name? Which folder it is? Uh, because it might be shared in this form for the participant as well. Then uh, it will give me links uh, how the how the um, direct link uh, uh, looks like for the new result system. Maybe you can remember uh, at the end of the demo, I, I showed you uh, a live session when the runners uh, were represented by by uh, colored dots. So the new result system shows not only a ranking table, but but uh, the uh, this special um, uh, replay could be available as well. And here are maybe you you are familiar. Here are the links that can be copied uh, because using by these links. Uh, a user who, who doesn't have an installed map run on your mobile could get the application installed. And plus, additionally, uh, the, the, the course that we defined, we have, we, we have just defined, could be opened directly by using this QR code. Okay, we are end of our time. Um, I can say only it is it is just the beginning <laughs> of learning. So many many features it has. Uh, you can you can get uh, more and more experiences step by step. Thank you, Gabriela. Uh, that's right. That uh, this is just uh, how to start up. And many thanks for your uh, presentation and uh, brief information. I highly propose and suggest to explore more by your own 
uh, especially where we don't need administration rights. You can have uh, a lot of things, um, and you can uh, this system can open your eyes further, uh, further than orienteering uh, as a, as a sport. And I would like to say many thanks for Lorma in order to, uh, I mean, for organizing uh, the webinar. I think uh, uh, the effort what uh, Lorma did uh, regarding the promotion of our favorite sport is, uh, is uh, well appreciated from our side. So thank you. And uh, as explained by Paolo beginning, uh, you will get a kind of form. And if you have any question, just share with us. Uh, we'll reply on that. Thank you, and see you again somewhere. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, Zoltan. Bye, Thank bye, you. bye, everyone. Bye, bye. Thank you. Good